Hey guys, welcome back to another Redbeard Outdoors episode. Well, not so Redbeard anymore. I shaved it all off right now, but getting ready for vacation. Need to do an oil change on this generator. And I'm also going to do a review of the generator and what I think of it. Uh, we will be taking this to Boonville. If you follow the channel, that is the Irish Setter Club of America National. And we are trying to get Reason a national win. So. Uh, let's get going and I will uh, tell you everything you need to know about this generator. Alright, the oil fill uh, area is behind this little panel door right here. And you just um, unscrew this. Pop that off. And let me show you what's going on deep inside here. All right, if your oil fill, that's your oil drain screw right there. And it funnels off of this into a hole down there. And I got it on these bricks and steps right here so that it can drop into my little cup below it. All right guys, what you need is a 10 millimeter socket, a socket extension, and your socket wrench here. You're gonna reach in there and loosen this guy. Get your cup in place. All right, there she goes. Get the screw right here. And the oil is draining. Uh-oh, made a little mess there. All right, while well, that's draining, when you get the, a new generator, you need to check your oil within the first four hours and possibly change it. This is about my uh, second oil change. I didn't do it four hours and it seemed to be okay, but sometimes there can be metal shavings in there and you wanna get that out of your oil. I'm going to check this for metal shavings. This is my second change, but I think it's gonna be all right and hopefully there's not any metal shavings in there. Have that tilted at an angle to help it drain a little bit better. I took the wheels off the bricks. I'm gonna open this for more airflow. I forgot to tell you guys that you need to open up the lid, take it off, the dipstick lid, there it goes, all right this is pretty much done draining, I'm going to take my rag and wipe it off a little bit. Put my 10 millimeter screw back in. Clean it up some more. Got it nice and clean and tightened up in there. Make sure not to over tighten that screw. Alright guys, new day, uh, a thunderstorm rolled in on me last night and um, had to put this on hold. So uh, next we're going to add the oil. 
You need 10 W30. This next part's kind of tricky. It comes with a special oil funnel and you fill it until it's level and you can see oil down there in those screws right there. Roughly it's about half a quart that's needed in here, so yeah. Uh, make sure you stuff a rag down in here. That'll help with any kind of spilling. And I got it about halfway. If you come in here and look at this, you can see the oil line right there. That's about where you want it. It's settled just a hair. I might put a tad bit more in there, but we're pretty close. All right, guys, I added a little bit more, and it's uh, really close to where I want it. So check it out. Next, we're gonna clean up any mess we got going on in here. All right, put your dipstick back in. Wipe everything down. You guys, you got this little uh, trap door I forgot to tell you about. That pops back up into here when you're done with it make sure you pop that off when you're draining the oil and that's where that goes all right we're gonna do a quick little review on this guy you have your off run and start you switch that over right here and hit the button switch it over to run it starts right up Eco mode has to be off when you start it. Switch that over. It's a lot quieter. That's where the inverter takes over right there. You have all your different power outlets here. 120. You got um, your RV hookup. And also the Predator comes with an adapter plug that you can use on that. It, uh, and we actually use the adapter for the horse trailer we're gonna be staying in. It has a manual pull right here in case the uh, battery dies. The battery's built in down under the front down here. It always suggests that you have a fuel additive added to it. Mainly because I think, you know, if you let your generator sit a lot, you don't want the fuel to go bad, so. That helps save the life of the generator. You have uh, your wheels and a wheel lock right here. It's really nice to keep it from rolling away on you. And uh, you have all these access doors you can unscrew and take off and you got your air filter and all that stuff behind these access doors. So I'm um, not really gonna dig into that, but uh, that's it, it delivers uh, 3,500 watts and um, so far it's been a great generator it works really well I've averaged about 11 to 12 hours on a tank in eco mode but if it's running full throttle it's probably more like eight hours or so overall it was a great buy we bought it at Harbor and Freight and I uh, got a uh, hundred bucks off of it so it was a pretty cheap deal I think we ended up paying $650 for it. A Honda generator that's similar is like $2,000, maybe even higher than that, $2,500, depending on where you buy it. And uh, this this gets the job done for us, so we have no complaints with this whatsoever. We have um, quite a bit of hours on it so far, and uh, probably should have changed the oil just a little bit more than what we did, but. Uh, we haven't seen any metal shavings, which has been a really positive for this generator. So that's going to do it for me. I hope you guys enjoyed this generator review and uh, hopefully learned something about it today. And uh, that's going to do it for me. If you enjoyed the video, smash that like button and make sure to subscribe for more generator and horse trailer 
uh, camping reviews. And you guys can see this predator uh, in action at some of our campsites. So uh, I will see you guys later. Get outdoors and keep using your generator. I'll catch you on the next Red Beard Outdoors episode.